The last time Jake Gyllenhaal was on the big screen, his heartbreaking performance in Brokeback Mountain brought him an Oscar nomination. Now he is back as a newspaper cartoonist who becomes obsessed with finding a serial killer in the new movie Zodiac. And when is it going to be finished? When you catch him? When you arrest him? Be serious. I am serious. I... I need to know who he is. I... I need to uh, stand there. I need to look him in the eye. And I need to know that it's him. Is that more important than your family's safety? Of course not. Why? Why do you need to do this? Why? Because nobody else will. And Jake Gyllenhaal is with us this morning. Good morning. Good Congratulations. Morning. Thank you. I have to say, you're a vision in pinstripes. I'm just trying to <laughs> match up with you today. You're looking looking pretty good there. Thanks, man. All right. Uh, the story, this is a real story. We're so many, we're several decades removed from it. But yeah. in the 70s, in the San Francisco Bay Area, this Zodiac killer was in the paper practically every day. He would send ciphers to the San Francisco Chronicle and they'd print them and it yeah. became kind of a phenomenon. Yeah. 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 The director of the movie talks about growing up there and saying this is part of the, was part of the consciousness of his childhood yeah. was that around every corner this guy might be looming or waiting somewhere. Yeah, he, he talks a lot about how when he was, there's, a, there's a scene in the movie and a big part in it where the Zodiac killer threatens to shoot little school children when right. they come off of the school bus. Off a school and, bus. Uh, Which turns into a scene in a Clint Eastwood movie. Yes, it does, actually. It's sort of based on Dirty mm. Harry. And, yeah. and, um, and David was David Fincher, who directed the film, was one of one of those kids on that on the school bus. So wow. he remembers police cars following mm -hmm. them, and he remembers the whole yeah, the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Talk about your character a little bit, because you play the role of a guy who was a cartoonist at the, at, at the paper, and he's not. He wants to get involved in, in solving this crime. And the paper, and the especially the Robert Downey Jr. character, was the big you know go get him reporter. He's quite reluctant to let you in on all of this stuff. Yeah, I mean he's. My character at the very beginning of the movie is just sort of on the peripheral of it. He's a, interested in puzzles, and he's interested in the ciphers that the killer sends. Mm -hmm. and, and then as the case goes on, and as Robert uh, Downey Jr.'s character and Mark Ruffalo's character, who plays the head detective, can't solve it, right. he picks it up under yeah. the guise of writing a book about it and uh, consequently doesn't have to deal with all the red tape and mm -hmm. all the things involved. Yeah. And you met him. You, went, you actually met the, the character this is based on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Robert Graysmith. What I was he like? He's an amazing character. He's an amazing man. He, um, I, I was expecting someone a little more sinister and a little darker to mm -hmm. be obsessed with a case like this, mm -hmm. but uh, he's surprisingly calm and collected and sweet. And, and when you meet somebody like that, you yeah. say, okay, and then what do you take from him in order to portray him on the screen? For me, it's physicality. I mean, to, to, to find inspiration for something, I think that has to come from the first time you read a piece of material, you're inspired by it, and you feel something within you that's instinctual. Uh -huh. And then his idiosyncrasy, just physically, the way he moves, the way yeah. he watches, the way he doesn't look anybody in the eyes, you know, that, that kind of stuff is... It's, it's a very interesting role, I think, for you, because this is... It's small. I mean, it's yeah. a huge part in this movie, but you have to be... Smart. That was yeah. That's I mean that's all. Oh, it's a it's a, a interesting frustration because I think the result of which I I'm very proud of. But during the process of it, it's so frustrating wow. not to just you know bust out, bust out. Yeah. Be more demonstrative. Yeah. Uh, I got got to talk about. Did you watch the Oscars last Sunday? I did. Yeah. Yes. And did. what was it like to know were you at home? I, I I was actually here. I was in. I, I live in Los Angeles. Right. I was in New York. But yeah. um, I love watching the Oscars on TV. I think I mean they uh, it's it's amazing being there but it's also wonderful just no pressure just chilling out hanging out and you know did you have to pinch for yourself? I mean, a year ago, you're sitting in the audience, and the camera is on you, and you're nominated, and and everything else. And then a year later, you're eating popcorn, drinking beer, and ah, look at that! <laughs> oh god, I'm glad I. Was. A year later, um, I was uh, doing a seaweed wrap. No, I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, a year later. I was yeah. No, I was I was just hanging out, which is, I mean. The honor of being nominated and mm. being a part of it is extraordinary. And uh, but then there's also another honor in terms of being uh, nominated, which is that you get to be a member of the Academy mm. and vote for the for the Academy Awards the next year. And I how got cool to was vote. that this year? That was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Did you the, job anybody, or did you feel good about your vote? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got. I, I think I pretty much across the board. I think I did pretty well. But I. Um, if I had, if all my votes had been in an Oscar poll, I don't know if I would have left with the. 
the with, loot. With the loot, yeah. right? Yeah, you didn't match up with the pool. Congratulations yeah. on this movie. It's <laughs> Thank uh, you. it really is stunning, breathtaking. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah. Thank you. Great to see you. Nice to see you. All right, Jake Gyllenhaal.